I had a great comment on my YouTube channel yesterday by a guy named Fataku and I had to make this video response to let him know that. His comment was amazing. Every single thing that he just said was wrong. Huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am Montoya. Welcome back. I had to make a video response to a comment on my channel because Fataku raised a lot of great points which come up a lot. And I thought if I can answer his post, I will answer the concerns that a lot of people have that follow Star Citizen from afar and don't actually get involved in the minutia of things happening on the inside. So let's start off by first reading his entire post and then I'll break it down piece by piece. Let's go. Let me start by saying I love the concept of Star Citizen. I love Space Sims and I was looking forward to this very much. Yes, so were we all. That being said, this game is a scam. It will be the biggest scam in the history of video games. They continue to promise more than they can deliver. Adding more ships, more features and continuously push the release the further forward in time. They are not on budget or on schedule as this latest cash grab is proof. This game is an excellent example of why publishers are so important. They keep you honest. They keep you on a budget and on a schedule. People who've purchased ships have funded the game resources that have since been discarded. They've had to start from scratch at least once switching to the new engine. Even if the game does eventually release, how will they reconcile the pay-to-win whales with people who only purchase the game? The funding will dry up once people get tired of being milked and as a result, this game's development will go on a permanent hiatus. Roberts and CIG will take the money and leave you with nothing but broken promises. Fataku, great, great points in that come up a lot and thank you for the opportunity to allow me to address them. First of all, the game being a scam. Uh, it will be the biggest scam in the history of video games. All right, if you start off with the whole notion that the game's a scam, then nothing I say going forward here will change your mind if you really convince yourself. But here's the thing, if this was a scam, if Chris Roberts wanted to run a scam, he should have taken the six million at the end of the Kickstarter and gone, just go. You don't take the six million, then open up a second studio and hire more people. You don't raise more money, then open up another studio in the UK and hire more people. And you certainly don't raise more money after that and open up a fourth studio. There are five studios if you count Turbulent with 450 employees working on this game, making salaries, having a living, taking the wives and girlfriends to restaurants, not at the same time. Well, maybe at the same time if she's into that, that would be hot. But not at the same time generally because that's a bad idea. People have the livelihoods. What kind of scam is it when you hire 450 people and give them livelihoods? No, I don't buy it. So for a second, try put aside the notion that's a scam and let's pretend it's real, all right? Let's continue. They continue to promise more than they can deliver. All right, what you're saying there has to do with the stretch goals. The stretch goals ended in 2015. There are no more stretch goals. They are not promising more. They've promised it. Now they are developing it. And every patch that comes down now, we see exactly they are delivering on what they said. Adding more ships, more features, and continuously push forward the release in time. No, as I just said, stretch goals ended a long time ago. Adding more ships, a very common one. People are saying, Star Citizen should stop making ships and focus on the game. Let me ask you, how many people do you think work on the ships? I'm going to tell you, and it's a lot less than what you think. Less than 10. Less than 10 of the 450 employees work on actually making ships. And of the 10, about three or four are texture and lighting artists, which work on other aspects of the game. So maybe four or five people are just work on just making the ships. So people who say Star Citizen should stop making ships and focus on the game have no idea about the internal structure that makes this company work because the guys making the ships do not work on the core game. They just make the ships. It doesn't affect the release date or the progression of the game itself. Continuing, they are not on a budget or a schedule and as this latest cash grab is proof. All right, what is the budget of this game? The budget has grown immensely. Initially, they said 6 million, then they said 20 million. But as the game has progressed, as people, more talented artists, better ship designers, as new technology procedurally generated cities, planet cities, 
The technology is amazing. They are creating something new, something we haven't seen before. The budget is not 20 million. The budget is not 50 million. The budget is whatever the budget is. As this game goes and develops, they need more people, they need more money. They're constantly hiring, they're growing all the time. There is no set budget where it ends and goes, okay, at this point, we don't need any more money. What kind of business has ever said, we don't need any more money? Said no business ever. No, so the budget is not set on anything. The budget is always growing as the company grows. Schedule, yeah, listen, the schedule, this game was supposed to be at 2015, then 2016, but as I just said, the scope back then increased as funding increased, as people showed interest in it and gave more funding. What Chris Roberts was able to do also changed. Nobody is happy about this. Everyone is pissed off as taking so long. Uh, you go on. This game is an excellent, excellent example of why publishers are so important. They keep you honest. They keep you on a budget. Oh, listen. listen. That is 100,000 gamers screaming out in agony. What just happened with Star Wars, Battlefront, and the loot boxes? What happened? EA, the publisher, said, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Star Wars guys. You put loot boxes there, there, and there. Oh, you want to progress in the game? Give us money first. That's what the publisher did. EA is continuously on the list of the most hated company in America almost every single year. Mass Effect Andromeda, what a nightmare. The guys at Bioware were doing their best. Their Bioware wanted to have a hundred procedurally generated planets to explore. EA came along and said, no, no, no. What you do is you spit this game out now. What, you want money? No, spit it out. What happened with Mass Effect Andromeda? What happened? Ask anyone who played. They will cry and say they're so disappointed. So no, what you said there about a publisher being important, every single person who's ever wanted to play a good Mass Effect game or every single person that played Star Wars Battlefront will strongly disagree with you. The advantage that CIG has because they are their own publisher is there is no hard deadline and there is no hard budget. They can keep on raising money and keep on working this game to the point where they feel this game is polished. This game is ready. This is the game that our backers deserve for their money. Because ask anyone at Bioware how they feel about EA pushing out their game early. Yeah, so I disagree with you strongly on that one. Moving on. People who've purchased ships have funded the game resources that have still since been discarded. I'm not sure what has been discarded for resources that we may have funded. Uh, you may have to elaborate on that one if I'm not understanding the statement correctly. They've had to start from scratch at least once switching to the new engine. No, uh, Crytek, makers of CryEngine, is uh, what we were on first at CryEngine. But then Crytek ran to financial problems and Amazon came along and Amazon said, hey Crytek, we're buying this from you. And Crytek said, absolutely, here you go, here's CryEngine. What happened was CryEngine forked. You have the CryEngine fork now and you have the Lumberyard fork. CIG simply hopped from CryEngine onto Lumberyard it was quick, it was easy. I believe they said they did it within a week. You change some libraries around, you change some file names around, and they were done continuing development on Lumberyard. They did not start from scratch at all. Even if the game does eventually release, how will they reconcile the pay to win whales with people who only purchased the game? Great question. Let me ask you this. EVE Online. EVE Online has been around for 15 years. There are whales in EVE. There are people. The local currency inside EVE is called ISK. There are ISK trillionaires people with a lot of in-game money that have every single ship in the game. If you start EVE right now, have you lost something? Have you lost something? Has the other guy who's been playing 15 years won the game? Hey, you EVE players, have you won the game? Let me know if you've won EVE because apparently, from what I'm reading here, if uh, you have every ship in the game, uh, you've won. <laughs> it's not, I have this talk a lot, you know, with all due respect. Those of you that have spent a lot of money on Star Citizen so you can own all the ships in the game. Thank you for backing the game, but you've done yourself a disservice. The disservice is you've missed out on the opportunity to play the game as intended, which is to start with the Aurora, the beautiful Aurora, and you work your way up. You trade, you make money, 
you earn the cutlass, you trade, you make money, you get the caterpillar or the constellation, you trade, you get the hull B, the hull E, you've worked and progressed your way up in the game. That's going to be the fun part of it. Those of you who simply want to have everything on day one, okay, fine, but now you've missed the opportunity to earn it in the game. And if that's the way you want to play, fine, but no, you have not won anything. I have a lot of ships. I have won nothing. I have not won Star Citizen. I have simply missed out on the opportunity to play the damn game. That's what I've done to myself. <laughs> Continuing, their funding will dry up once people get tired of being milked. And as a result, this game's development will go on a permanent hiatus. Nice, good point. How, unfortunately, your point is moot because everyone was saying this back in 2015 when we hit 50 million plus people saying well that's it 50 million i think you've milked back as well they have who else is going to back this game it's going to flop for sure now 2016 came along here's the funding chart by the way 2016 came along 100 million dollars what a glorious milestone that was people were saying well that's it you know they've milked back as dry they've milked any potential back as dry who's going to back this game funding's dry up this game's done nope 2017 for sure now they've run out of cash this is the end for sure nope <laughs> listen 2018 closing in on 200 million dollars the same thing is being said the naysayers are still at it the funding is gonna dry up the back is being milked dry hey the hercules sale i haven't checked the numbers today the hercules sale just raised 1 million in four days that doesn't seem like drying up to me it seems to be going stronger than ever and the ships are more beautiful than ever and funding is increasing all the time. So listen, I hear you. People have been saying this for the last five years. Every single month they go, well, that's it. Funding's drying up. No, it never has. And it's going to continue. If at one point funding does slow down, I watch this very closely. If funding slows down, I'll be the first to put out a video saying red alert. Star Citizen funding slowing down. It'll be a great video. Get tons of hits. It hasn't happened yet. So watch my channel because when it does happen, I will do it. And uh, your final comment there, Roberts and CIG will take the money and leave you with nothing but broken promises. Again, ties into your very first comment about the game being a scam. Uh, yeah, Roberts must be the dumbest. This is a family friendly show because if Roberts was trying to scam, he should have taken the money and run a long time ago. Take that 6 million, take the 10 million, run off to some island somewhere, get yourself a younger wife. Sandy, you're great, but there's always the risk. You know it, when lots of money's involved, these guys run off and get a younger model. Chris, don't do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Roberts had every opportunity to leave with lots of money. Now he has to pay salaries to everyone. Uh, so your last comment there, no, not at all. I hope this answers your concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do run into people with the same concerns or questions, feel free to send them to this video. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up if you like this. Comments below and uh, also that notification bell by the subscribe button there. Click that, apparently that's important these days. I will see you in the next one.